So, hi, Tracy. Hi, Andreas. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to uh, to have this little chat today. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was just wondering uh, to begin with. I think uh, a lot of people might have some questions regarding spend based and activity based uh, approaches. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could uh, give me a little introduction to what they are first. Yeah. These two approaches uh, have one thing in common. That is, uh, people use them to perform carbon footprint accounting. Mm. Um, and the first one, spend-based approach, as the name indicates, mm -hmm. is based on spend data. So a company or reporting person can use financial data of mm -hmm. its own um, as uh, input data, while the other one is uh, based on activities or processes. Mm -hmm. um, and the data input are mostly um, like engineering data mm -hmm. uh, in physical units, like in liters or in kilograms, in kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the, the differences of the approaches? Would you say that one is more ideal than the other or more optimal? Or is there, let's say, different uh, pros and cons of using these approaches? Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Um, I think these two approaches have their own advantages mm. depending on the intended application of okay. this carbon footprint accounting that mm. a company or an individual wants yeah. to perform. And uh, they differ in many aspects, and some of them like are very important as they determine the quality of the assessment hmm. and how we can use and apply the results into decision making. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I have to say that uh, there's no one fit all solution. Hmm. Um, so it depends on uh, the intended application of this assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, is there, um, do, would you have some, let's say, uh, if not day to day, then some examples that could illustrate uh, spend based and, and activity based? Yeah, I can give you a quick mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Let's say that uh, I am a company mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I purchased this cup of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if I want to use spend based approach to perform a carbon footprint accounting to evaluate the climate performance of this cup of water, the only information I need is the price yeah. for this cup of water. Uh, let's say 20 krona or mm -hmm. um, 3 euros per cup. And then I can search in the database for emission factors. Mm. Let's say 5 kilogram CO2 equivalent per euro. Um, then I multiply these two numbers. Then mm. I get the total result. Mm. But if I take the activity-based approach, yeah. then I need to look at the details. Mm because that's the requirement for this approach, mm. um, as it tries to give a physical um, reality, mm -hmm. yeah, try to project the physical reality with okay. the data input. So for this assessment, there would need information such as um, how much um, is this water, like the weight of this water mm. and uh, the temperature, if there's any um, pre-processing treatment, uh, before uh, I get this cup of water, if it's hot, if it's chilled, and so on, um, then I need to look up in the databases mm. the corresponding emission conversion factors mm. and multiply um, these physical data inputs with the corresponding conversion factors, sum them up, I get the total fi final result. Okay. Yeah. As you can yeah, mm. see, that this activity based approach requires uh, more detailed data. Mm. And it takes probably longer time and also resources to take. But um, in the end, I can get also results in higher level uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, have a detailed look into this assessment and mm. this, this cup of water. And then look for the hotspots, whether it's a cup or if it's a water or if it's a heating or cooling process mm. that contribute most. While for the other approach, I can only get a proxy. Okay. Well, I think that's, uh, that's some great examples. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thanks.